Hello YouTubers, it's Travis. Welcome back to the channel. You know, sometimes when you start a draft, you can end up picking the best card out of the pack for the first four or five picks. And then you look and before you know it, you've got five colors and you wonder, what exactly have I done? Can I save this? Is it too late to move? Uh, that can especially happen at the beginning of a new set when not everybody agrees on the signals and what's good and what isn't. Uh, that never happens to me though, so it's certainly not what you're gonna see here. If you like the content you're seeing here, please do consider subscribing to the channel. And if you really like it, check a link below. There's a link to my patron and you can support it directly. I hope you enjoy today's draft. Alrighty, pack one, pick one. What have we got? We've got the pack leader, which is okay. The pummeler, which is good. The purifier, which I'm probably taking and some commons. I think I could justify the Pummeler or the Purifier here. I don't think the rare is good enough to grab, unless I'm just misunderstanding this, right? So this is a 1-mana 2-1 that grows when I cast expensive stuff. So if I top deck it later, it's a 1-mana 3-2, kind of. I mean, that seems okay, but Hunter played one of these against me in the sweatsuit, and I kind of didn't care. What's up, Ace? I think the Purifier has the highest upside. If we can get into Orzhov life gain, this is going to be great. And if we can't, like, okay, cool. I'll play some melts. None of the premium commons, um, nothing that's really driving me nuts here. I feel like we take the child of the pack and same thing. If green, red is open, cool, we'll play this. If it's not, eh. There might be some temptation to be like, I'll take the Dawnheart Geist and build around the purifier, but I, I feel like it's either open or it isn't. We're not going to try to force it. Flame Blessed Bolt is good enough to think about over the Sigarden Paladin. I think I could still make an argument to just take that, too. I think I might still just do it. It's kind of like if any of these color pairs are open, we've got a premium uncommon for it. Hello, Draftorino. It kind of sounds like they're mowing down a forest behind the house. I'm not exactly sure what's going on, which would be fine, except there's not a forest behind the house. So maybe somebody's just chopping down someone else's house. I don't really know what's happening over there. So now we're at a point where we kind of need to be thinking about commons. There's the Drog Scroll Infantry, which I do like. There's a Scavenger, which could play well in the Black-White deck in particular. There's nothing here particularly exciting. I think I'm going to go for the Scavenger. I could play it in Black-White or Green-White. But you can kind of see how this would be way better in the Black-White. But I just, I don't have a reason to be doing that yet. Well, they didn't have a bomb in them, but like the uncommons were all good. And there's nothing wrong with Drog Skull Infantry. I can en envision scenarios where I'm picking that and happy about it. It's just not fourth pick. So fair enough, Ace. Kind of weak packs. Hello, Magistrate. Hmm. 
This kind of feels like the suppository scab is the best card here. That's way off of where we were going, but sure. Show me the way. Been pretty happy with one Skywarp scab. The Binding Geist I didn't particularly love. Were we just secretly blue-white the whole time? Mm, some options. I think I like the Kindly Ancestor here. It leaves us an opportunity to go blue-white without closing off the Purifier. Yeah, I think the Ancestor could be at least all right here. This pack is leaving a lot to be desired. I suspect we're going to play white. Like, <clears throat> I think the question is basically blue-white or black-white at the moment. Uh, that's not necessarily a given. But I think out of these medium cards, I'm most likely to play the Piercing Light. I don't love this card, though. I do like Repository Scabs, and I do like Syncopate. I don't think I would ever bring it in. Let's see where this takes us. I, I initially was kind of down on this. After playing with it some, I'm very happy to have one of these. So I, I think we're leaning blue-white here. My problem with that is, like, I don't want to play a Coercion. Good morning, Surgeon. I'm going to take this just in case Black opens up, because I'm not dying for any of these cards. Well, as those of you who watch the sweatsuit know, it's pretty easy to play around if you know what's up. There's still some world where we get into blue, uh, black, and we're interested in having something to just continue sacking, but that's... That's pretty far away from where we are. But we could be doing Esper things. I'm just going to hack this because it's uncommon. But sure, we can have one in the sideboard. I guess if I'm a slow control -y deck and my opponent's a slow control -y deck, maybe I'm bringing that in. So Angelic Quartermaster has got some good things going for it. So does the Twin Blade Geist. Uh, no, you can't, and no, it isn't. But we're not here to discuss Dread Fog. If the bomb's in play, this doesn't do anything. And if you cast it and it's not in their hand, it doesn't do anything. This is not a good card, and you should not play it. If it worked for you once, that's well. If you like removal, you drafted poorly. <laughs> this is not going to help you. No, it isn't. I can take the Quartermaster, and I'm not going to argue about this anymore. I found a $20 bill in a parking lot once. I didn't quit my job and start looking for $20 bills full time. Don't put this in your deck. I, I hear what you're trying to say, Ace, and we can talk about it in depth when I'm not in the middle of a draft. Alien, thank you very much for the Prime sub. Go spam some cats for Ellie. It's pretty bad. I can see where you might bring it in from the sideboard on occasion, though. Good morning, Harper. Thank you for the host. I feel like it's a little early to pick the Lantern Bearer. Like, I don't know for sure that we're going in that direction. And, like, the Wolf Strike is the best card by a lot. Is green-white still a possibility? It might be. I don't have like any good interaction. <laughs> These packs are making it difficult for me. 
Uh, Hamlet wouldn't do anything for us, Ace. We don't have, we have literally no humans. Like, we would be bringing in this and have one human, potentially. Yeah, I'm at a bit of a loss is where we're supposed to go. Okay. I was going to say we could go in for the cadet here, but I, I think at this point we just take the evolving wilds and still hug this, like, esper thing and maybe consider splashing a wolf strike. Because I'm still not quite sure where we're at. I should be by now, but I'm just not getting any real signals. So at least being able to splash a good removal spell sounds good to me. This has been okay. White's not flowing. I don't have any reason to be playing any white cards. <laughs> Hope you have a nice cat today. Thank you, Panza. got two potential splashes, but there's no reason for me to be playing white. I'm not getting any good white cards. Like, at all. The fountain I can work with. I think we're supposed to be blue-black through all of that. And then we can decide if we have any incidental life gain and play the purifier, or if we just want to splash a removal spell. Y'all spam some cats for Panza. Sorry, didn't mean to go off on a bit of a tangent there. But, like, I, I think it's important to avoid hyperbole when talking about cards and to say something's fine when it's not fine, when it's like a move of desperation, I don't think is sending the right message. Egg could be good. Like we've got the suppository scabs to exploit it. Ideally we'll get more. Wouldn't mind a two dropper, three. We're not going to have any life gain. That's There's no point in playing that. We could have more zombies. We could have a significant amount of zombies. You know, it feels weird, but I think we did finally figure out what color pair we're supposed to be in. Yeah, I would say so, because, like, I want all of this, frankly. I'm going to go for the uncommon. How many of these can I play? What am I getting back that I'm that excited about? Nothing, really. But I don't want that. So, here you go. Good morning, Auntie. How you feeling, bud? I probably have to play this. Well, I guess we'll do zombie things. Seems okay. Good tree drops are rare in this set. I don't think that's necessarily the case. Well, I suppose good is open to interpretation. Oh, I'm sorry, dude. I, I managed to get a good night's sleep. So I, I think my worries were mostly just one night. What's color dependent? It's funny to get a rare and then be like, do we even want to play it? Because I kind of just want this. I'm sorry, Auntie. I care's literally the rare for our color pair and it doesn't do anything. I need twos. I think Runo could do some work. Just don't think I'm that interested in the work that him do. So looking back, I guess we were supposed to be blue green, something something. We're probably gonna have to run that too. I'm just gonna take this. I don't have solid removal, and if I take that, I play in the wolf strike and the bleed dry. Apparently, okay, never mind. We're fine.
I may not need the wolf strike. I could play some thongs. If I get another one, I'll cut the spirit for it. Dissenter's Ghoul. These are both good, but I think right now I've got more exploiting. Yeah, I've certainly got more exploiting than good targets. Because we're not always going to draw the specimen. This looks alright to me. There's another Dissenter. Sold. Yeah, I'm down with the thong. I just want to have multiples. Because maybe one's dirty and you haven't done laundry. I would imagine so, yeah. Could jam one more of these dudes and call it a deck. This looks okay to me. I think I'd like to cash in the binding guys for something a little better, but. <clears throat> what did you miss? A discussion of underwear, but that's about it. All right, let's get our last two drop and go. I was watching Michael Jacob last night, and he suggested that Mind Leech Ghoul is a little better than it looks because people will be holding lands to discard to blood tokens in a significant number of spots. So exiling a card is almost always good. It's like, you know, he might be onto something there. Another Lunar Rejection, huh? Vis-a-vis -vis another Doom Dissenter. I'd rather have this. Let's have access to the combat trick if we want it. I'm, I could see bringing in a Feign Death. And I could see bringing in a Syncopate if we know we're going on the play. I don't think there's enough instance... Yeah, because this is a sorcery for us to be main decking a stink of paint. Home Slice said he was going to send me a lesson plan, and he didn't. May have to do it live, as they say. So what do we cut from here? Maybe just our worst creature? I don't feel like I need that many suppository scabs. I think I can work with this. I don't think I need the two for us. I don't see why I would need more than one. Yeah, this looks pretty good. This is not actually that far off from what I did in the sweatsuit. So go, go zombies, I guess.
All right. Got some card draw, got some three drops. Wouldn't have minded a two drop, but you know, that's okay too. Steve, how you doing, bud? wouldn't mind being able to kill that. Let's see if we can do this into hitting a uh, swamp and cast the Doom Dissenter. Kind of not exactly what I was after. Because playing the uh, Steel Clad Spirit just doesn't really do anything here. But sure. Maybe you can get exploited. I guess they wanted it dead. Not really sure why. Wanted to hold up a counter spell for this. You got me. They thought it had flying. Okay, yeah, that was a fun game John and I were playing. And Dave, Dave, everybody was playing. Does this have flying or not? that right now. Well, just because something has flying doesn't mean that it's always flying. I don't need that. I might decide to loot that away. Like, I have legs, but I'm not always standing. I imagine somewhere there's people playing a card game where creatures have abilities like walking, and they're like, the man is clearly in a chair, but he has walking. What'd that do? Whenever you gain life, put a counter on it. So Johnny's pride mate. Okay. comfortable with this. We. Oui.
Double black would be swell, but I kind of can't do it there, right? Hey, look, we got, we, we did it. We got there. Hey, yeah. Right on time. It's exactly where we need to double black. All right, so our opponent doesn't seem to be particularly aggressive. Just a lot of blue black disturb stuff, which makes me think I, I don't need the steel clad spirit in this matchup. Like, I think Undying Malice could be cute. Uh, with some of our exploit duders. Our own binding geese might be okay. They've got flyers. Slapping that on the flyers kind of nice. No, no graveyard hate. There's not really any incidental. The, the stuff that has graveyard hate tacked on it, you'd either main deck or not. Like, there's nothing to really bring in to hate a graveyard. Because, like, if you're bringing it into Hate a Graveyard, you're probably screwing up your deck to do it. Splashing just for Wolf Strike? Yes, we're splashing for Wolf Strike. But I think I like that swap. I mean, if the mana's good, it seems reasonable to splash for a premium removal spell. And the mana's great. We got two wilds. I don't see why we wouldn't. It does leave us the opportunity to bring in more sideboard cards. We just don't really have any. Like, we've got some white cards that are, like, medium minus, but that's why we got out of white. Yeah, I think I like this, and then I'll probably cut something for the syncopate if we go to a game three. Just a fun part of our game. Good morning, Carl. The stickers look a little bigger. We'll need some action. Stink of pay would be pretty brutal here. So good on him. I hope they do not have another. They do not. Nothing to go get with it.
Noise. It's not really well one could argue and I think they might be right it's on the draw I'm gonna be able to discard the specimen I think this is close to a reasonable cape if you wanted to send it back I, I wouldn't be like oh my god But I'm like, I get two looks. That's certainly a possibility. Like, there's not a lot of one-landers I'll keep, regardless of on the player draw, without some information. But that one looked like it had some reasonability to it. That kind of sucks that we're playing against a ramp deck. Because they've gotten pretty far ahead of me. But I can start clocking them with zombies. So I guess we'll probably look at doing that. Well, a two-lander is taking a risk. If you don't hit the land, you're going to lose the game. And, I mean, this one obviously had that same risk. Like, that's always been a part of it when you keep something. You're, you're saying, I'm comfortable risking losing the game over this. I mean, it'll get to the graveyard naturally. I don't have to work it. I think we're just looking to block for a little bit. So the 5-5 five five has to be more of a problem than Garolf right now. I do suspect I've gotten to the point where I mulligan too little. Right, but like it was it was a bit of an overcorrection, but I, I I still think if you could never mulligan, you would be better than if you mulliganed fifty percent of your hands. Probably even twenty percent of your hands. Cause it's probably something around fifteen percent that you're actually supposed to mulligan. And I end up keeping most of them anyway.
Well, that's unfortunate. We're still stable. Well, you know, we were. Now I would say not so much. I think I'm very likely dead here. If I wasn't, what would that look like? Probably something like this. Just getting this guy and flip... No, it would look at getting the most ground blockers I can next turn. Probably still not going to work, though. Yuck. It doesn't matter. Okay, fine. Don't keep one landers, ladies and gentlemen. I should have known better. Alright, so their deck is actually aggressive enough that I do like the Steel Clad Spirit. Quite a bit. I'm going on the play, so Syncopate is interesting as well. I think I've got enough card advantage that I'd rather have the uh, syncopate on the play. Let's see if I'm crazy. Everybody grab a leg. When is it correct to exploit with Mind Lage? When you've got a creature that you're happy to exploit, uh, such as a Doom Dissenter, or when a two drop would not be valuable on the board. So turn two on the play, I don't think you would ever do that. Yeah, if I'd had the specimen, sure. That seems pretty reasonable. I just countered that so I could do something with the turn cycle, because eventually they're going to play a creature, and we're going to bounce or kill it, and that's, that's the end of that. This is just the last game, but in reverse.
But I think you should think, is a two drop valuable on this board? I suppose you're talking about exploiting it to itself, right? Because obviously on turn two, you don't do it. And somewhat obviously, if you have something that you'd like to sacrifice, you do it. So if I've got a specimen or a dissenter in play, by all means, let's do it. So you're talking late game, you top deck it. I, I think that's where you look and say, do I need a 2-2? Two -two? And if the answer is no, make it happen. I'd aim for the head kind of sucks that I have to play against that, but it is what it is. I'm trying to decide if we want the feign death here. We're going on the draw, so I certainly don't need the point of discussion, and I, I, I don't know that I'm going to get away with uh, Stinkipate because I had a good bit of ramp, too. So I think we'll give it a try. I wouldn't say this is beautiful, but... I can grab a leg. This does not work against your creature getting exiled, no. Sim wife, my favorite person. Everybody grab a leg. Somebody be missing some land drops. I approve. One plus one equals leg. Fair enough. I saw it on the internet. Therefore, it must be true. That fellow's just a good, solid blocker, isn't he? Man. It ain't worth waiting a turn. Because they've got a tough decision to make here. One of their mana creatures when they're obviously mana screwed. Versus their rare. Not to mention we get the 5-4. And if we can set up where they want to kill this via blocks, that would be fantastic. Because it's a wonderful creature to use Undying Malice on. Yeah, this is not so difficult for us. That doesn't really matter because I'm going to pop this, but I'm going to draw this first. It's 
though. Good. Interesting. I don't know how you don't block that. Whatever you want on your pizza, dude. I'm not your dad. <laughs> Go get him, team. I guess they were figuring they're not going to get any use out of the wolf strike if they don't use it there. Like, it was good plays, but, like, mana issues was kind of the name of that game. Might be the worst start you've ever had. I'm sorry to hear that, John. Did the person you liked design this one or the person you didn't like? Was this supposed to be my set or your set? For those who don't know, there's two main designers for Magic, and John likes one of them and I like the other. Because typically if the one he likes makes the set, I'm not going to enjoy it very much. I mean, my first draft was a 1-2 as well, man. Like, it is what it is. I've had some 3-0s since then. I can't remember if he's the one you like or not. We try that. Because this one seems all right to me so far. Hey, nice. See, I'm very skilled at this game. It's bloody three drop. We can keep it, but... Noise. Yes, please. All of that. I mean, it's not that often you get two sets that are, uh, since we've exited the block structure, that feel the same. I think that's kind of what made um, Ixalan 
universally disliked was that Rivals didn't change anything. It's not that Ixalan was terrible. I don't think it was really anybody's favorite format, but it wasn't that bad. Ooh. Well, okay. I need to find a removal spell for that right now or it will kill me. I've sort of got an option, if they don't do anything, of getting back the Gargantuan and slowly getting there, but I, I imagine they're going to play more stuff, you know? I mean, things just really good. Punished for not playing the land first. It is what it is. I didn't quite think that one out all the way. Dude. Yeah, the bombs are real good. I have to untap and kill this immediately or we're dead. Oh, we're not. That works too. Okay, so we don't want to use our removal to disrupt their ramp. That's not what they're doing. And I think we're very interested in syncopate. They do look like they were trying to come out a bit aggressive. So I, I kind of still like the steel clad spirit. But if something's got to go, it's going to be that. No, you don't get a chance to cast the spell in between.
Okay. We can talk. You think we could have? I don't think that's how exploit works. But I'm not a judge. If we have a judge in chat, they could probably clear that up for us. It didn't give me any intervening chance to respond. Like when I cast an exploit creature, it just is like exploit yes or no. So does exploit go on actually go on the stack? Full control. Okay, so I need to full control if I want to do that. Fountain of blood. I guess that's instead of a chocolate fountain. Yeah. Or what's up, dude? In like two years, and I'm doing sealed, and I'm lost and confused. Good to see you again. I remember you from back in the day, my friend. It is good to see you again. Another draft, another 3-0. Things are good. It is good to be Travis. I have had some less than stellar drafts. We had one yesterday that was like a 0-2, but like I knew I was drafting bad there and I didn't feel well. So I think that was kind of part of it. Burn these just to get the gems out of them. I'm not going to have any hot tips. I'll have some cold tips, though. So, cold tip. Is the removal spells in each color are good, and you should prioritize them. And all of the other commons go into a specific color pair. Pay attention to which color pair they go into. That's it. The best commons are the removal spells, just like the... The best commons are removal spells? Always have been. And of course, a big thank you to my patrons. Paul, Punk, Adrian, Hero, Joe, Jesse, Jacob, Scott, Fasty, Rich, and Michael. I really appreciate your support. 
If you'd like to become a patron as well, see your name up in lights at the end of the videos and directly support the content that I'm creating, there's a link below to my Patreon. Thank you all very much. I'll see you soon.